Hi guys, in this video I will show you how to build a basic web application from scratch in Eclipse. I start at the very beginning by downloading the Eclipse IDE and walk over all the steps involved to get a web application running that can respond to a request in a browser. Let's start by going to eclipse.org and there at the top right corner click the download button. Now instead of downloading the recommended Eclipse IDE that comes up here, click on Download Packages. This will bring up a bunch of different configurations for the Eclipse IDE. Select the Eclipse IDE for web developers. Then on the side, select your operating system, either Windows, Mac OS or Linux. In my case, it will be Mac OS. Then click the download button. This will now download the Eclipse IDE and you can select where the file should be stored. Click OK. Once the download is complete, open the downloaded file and then double click on the Eclipse icon to launch Eclipse. Click open. And then the first dialog that this will bring up is the workspace selection. Here you can select a folder where all the projects that you create in Eclipse will be located. If you don't want to get prompted this dialog every time you launch Eclipse, you can click the checkbox. If you have multiple workspaces, you can leave this unchecked so every time you open Eclipse, you can select the workspace. Now let's start Eclipse. Click the launch button. Then close the welcome page and then on the left hand side you will see a list of actions. Select the one create a dynamic web project. If you don't see this list you can always reach it with a menu. Go to file new and dynamic web project. This will bring up a dialog where you can enter a project name. I will call my project my first web app. Next, we want to select that runtime. This is to set up the web application server that will host and run our web application. Click new runtime, expand Apache, and select the latest Apache Tomcat server. Click next, load and install. I accept and finish. Then select the directory for the installation of Tomcat. Click open. You will see it's downloading and installing Tomcat at the bottom. Once that's complete, click Finish. This will update the configuration here. It will take Apache Tomcat as the runtime and use the default configuration. Click Finish. This will now generate a basic project template for a web app. You can expand it to see the different directories. Now the important one here is source main Java. This is where you'll add Java packages and Java classes. Next, I add a package to source name Java. Right click on source name Java, select new package. I will name this package edu.example.server. Then I add a class to this package. Right click on the package, select new class. I will name this class hello world. This will generate an empty Java class and I will replace this with my own code. My code is a class named hello world that extends HTTP servlet. A servlet is a class that handles requests. An HTTP servlet is a class that handles HTTP requests. Now you should already be familiar with HTTP. HTTP is a hypertext transfer protocol that has a set of methods. If you hover over this class, you'll get a description. And the important methods here all start with do. They're prefixed with do, followed by the HTTP method name. For example, do get handles HTTP get requests. Do post handles HTTP post requests. Do put handles HTTP put requests. 
and do delete handles HTTP delete requests. Now, you don't need to override all of these. You can only override the ones that are important to your application. In my case, I only override the do get method. It has two parameters. The first one is of type HTTP servlet request, and the second one is of type HTTP servlet response. As the name applies, the first one represents the request that's incoming, and the second one represents the respond of how this application responds to that request. The request object you can use to get all kinds of information about the request such as the content type, any headers, and so on. For the response, you can use to respond to the request. In my example, I set the content type to text slash HTML. That means this respond, response holds HTML text. Then I get the writer, which is of type print writer. I name this out, and then I call the print line method on it. This works similar like you use system.out.println. And then I generate a single HTML element. This element is an H1 element, and the text it contains is welcome to my web app. Now, if you have a larger application, typically you need to do some wiring and connect this to other objects in your application. This is what the init method is for. So if you have other objects, and you need to do some initialization part, you can do this in the init method. You can also connect to a database or anything that you need to do in this servlet. Then the destroy method is used to clean up this application, to close database connections or any of such things. Next, we need to add a file named the deployment descriptor. For that, expand source, main, web app, and web inf. This is the folder where it will be located. Right click on web inf, select new file, name this file web.xml, then select source at the bottom so we can see the source in the file, and I paste my own code in it. This, is, this file always has a root element named web app, and inside it has some additional elements. This file is named the deployment descriptor, and essentially it maps a URL pattern to the methods in my servlet class. It can also do a bunch of other stuff such as filtering and pre-processing requests. But in this case, the only thing that I do is map a URL to the class that I just defined. Now, there are two elements. The first one is servlet element. And the second one is the servlet mapping. Let's start with the servlet element. This one has two nested child elements. The first one is servlet name and servlet class. The servlet class is the fully qualified class name of an HTTP servlet. So we'll start with the package name, which is edu.example.server, and then followed by the class name, hello world. The servlet name can really be anything. It's really just an identifier, so I could call this my servlet or anything I want. The important thing here is that it matches the servlet name in the servlet mapping. This is essentially the glue that ties these things together. And in the servlet ma mapping, I define a URL pattern. I just use slash star to use the wildcard to match any URL pattern in the request. Now with this, our servlet is ready and we can deploy this web application. So right click on the folder, select run as in the context menu, and then run on server. Expand Apache, select the latest version of Tomcat v1 server, select next and finish. This will now launch Tomcat And this will bring up a tab in the web browser with the name of my application. So it's localhost at port 8080. And the first path here, the root path, is the name of the web application. This would be if you had multiple web apps, 
they would be distinguished by the first path. I didn't have any further path, and even if I had it, um, let's say surflet, it will automatically map to my surflet because I have the wildcard here. Now, if you want to distinguish the pattern, you can define this here. For example, you can say only surflet should go to this hello world surflet. But I leave it like this. You can see also it generated the HTML page with the header heading one and the heading one text is welcome to my web app. This is what I defined in the hello world class as welcome to my web app. Now, if I want to customize this, I can add more print line. I hope you're doing well. And then when I go back to this page and refresh it to a few times, you can see it pops up here. I hope you're doing well. So this is how you build a web application in Java. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.